All right, how you guys doing today? This is Mr. Muscarella coming at you, and I'm going to show you some more examples on using similar right triangles that involve applying geometric mean, theorem, and the altitude. So first, let's go ahead and make sure that we understand which piece is the altitude when you're given a picture for right triangles. Now check this out here. In our picture, you're going to have to be able to recognize like this piece right here, or if it's flipped around, this piece right here, both of those, that serves as your altitude. So as the altitude, what we're going to do is we're just going to call that A to represent the altitude. Now the next thing that we need to do is identify the two parts of the hypotenuse of the big triangle. So what we're going to do is we're going to call one part of that B and the other part C. Now again, if our triangle's flipped around a little bit, we can put B in this spot and C in this spot. It doesn't really matter where as long as you've got them both. Generally speaking, this is how you're going to set up this problem. You're going to set up a proportion. I'm going to use GM for geometric mean and just kind of abbreviate that. So the geometric mean is always going to get slotted in these two spots. And then one part of the hypotenuse is going to go here, and the other part is going to go here. So I'm going to just abbreviate that, part of hypotenuse, and then part of hypotenuse. So we're just going to abbreviate that. Now based on the way we have our letter set up here, I'm going to have my formula is just going to end up being, I'm going to have A, in these two spots because that represents my altitude that's going to be the geometric mean and then B and C are going to get slotted in these two places and the order doesn't matter so as long as you get that setup correct the rest of it is just going to be simply solving a proportion which you guys should be good at at this point in your math lives now let's go ahead and practice a couple of examples just to make sure you've totally got this down so here we are with this picture, and we're going to use x here as our geometric mean. So that is going to get slotted down here in this spot and up here. Next, I'm going to take the 2 and place it here, and the 4 down in this spot. When I've got that proportion set up correctly, the rest of it is just going to be arithmetic. x times x gives me x squared, and then 2 times 4, of course, gives me 8. Now to solve this, I'm going to have to take the square root of both sides, and don't forget, you're going to have to do plus or minus the square root. But since we're dealing with geometry, we're only going to work with the positive square root of 8 because we want the distance. And distance in this case is always going to be positive. Now, we do have to simplify square root of 8, so just a quick review. So the square root of 8 would be the same thing as the square root of 4 times square root of 2. Now, of course, square root of 4 simplifies down to 2, and so your final answer is x has a value of 2 square root of 2. So that's all you have to do for that. Set up your proportion, take your time, cross multiply, and solve. Now we'll go ahead and try one other example here. Check this one out. So again, we're going to go ahead and get everything kind of set up. x is our altitude, so we're going to put that in those two slots. Now one part of my hypotenuse over here is 2, but then, what, what? I do not have the other piece of the hypotenuse, yo. And that's where you got to be careful because a lot of times people are like, oh, I'm just going to plug in the 8 because that's the other number they give me. No, don't do that, sucker. You need this number right here. You need that 6 because 2 plus 6 gives you 8, right? So I need that 6 because the 6 is going to go down here, not an 8. I pity the fool to put an 8 in there because then you get the whole thing wrong. Anyway, moving on. So when you do your multiplying, you get x squared equals 12. And again, we're only dealing with the positive square root. So when you take plus or minus the square root of 12, you should be able to recognize the square root of 12 and simplify that. I'll just have square root of 4 is 2. And square root of 3 I can't do anything with. So booyah, we done with that. So again, be careful on this one because a lot of times people want to put an 8 in that spot. And it's not an 8, it's a 6, so don't, don't fall for that. Now I've got one more example, and then we're wrapping it up. Go ahead and try this one on your own. Go ahead and set it up, solve for x, come on back when you're done, and check it, see how you did. So how'd you do on this one? You should have recognized that 5 is your altitude, and that goes in the geometric mean slot, so that's going to go in this place, in this place, and when you cross multiply and divide, you figure everything out. You get x is about 4.17. So that's it on this video. Hopefully by now you guys can figure out all these geometric mean theorem problems that involve the altitude, and you're ready to rock and roll on this. Thanks for watching. You guys have a great day. Peace out.